Spotty always did betray him. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> got the hard line. There's no time. You're gonna have to get to another exit. He's got keys around here. No time for love, Dr. Jones. No time for no time for podcast. <laughs> I know I can't be bothered with that. I have no time for that sort of nonsense. Yeah, gotta meet the new dog. Yeah, here I'll get her. Edgar already saw her, but come here, Evelyn. She wasn't that impressive. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, she's a tiny little girl. You have a light or anything in your place? Oh, yeah. Here, we'll, we'll turn some. Picky, picky. Right? Finally. Alexa, turn on the lights. <laughs> Illuminate. Illuminate. No. Oh. Come here. Come here, little girl. Come here. Come here. Come here, little girl. Sounds like she's well trained. That's going to come. You just wait. It's gonna... <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Finally dumped a light. There she is. Nice. How do they get along so far? Uh, yeah, no, he's a good big brother. He's actually very gentle with her. Okay. Um, she she nips at him all the time, and he just lets her, which is kind of crazy. Um, he does he does bark at her quite a bit, which annoys the shit out of me. But I'm sure I'm sure your neighbors love it though. Oh yeah, they think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> They're big fans. <laughs> but but she's tiny, and she snoozes. She snoozes good. She sleeps and she likes to sleep at my feet. Aww. Now, knowing what your feet look like, they <laughs> really smell like. Well, I was waiting for somebody. <laughs> Is the dog okay sleeping down there? Yeah, she's she's good. What's going on, little girl? All right, I'll hold on to her for now. She might she might stay in my lap while we're doing this. So we'll see if she does. Yeah, that's not going to happen very well. But oh, we'll see. Can't thank you all enough for, for your time here. Um, Blues, I know we're up late for you for your bedtime. Yeah, no, it is our bedtime. We're 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 going to bed and we're usually in bed right now, actually. So you realize it's eight o'clock. Yeah, no, I know I'm I'm old as fuck. Like you guys are too, but you know. You do realize Pete stopped working like 15 minutes ago, right? <laughs> That's not true. I took my uh youngest to the Minions movie. So how how is that? I've heard it's good. It's all right. It's short. It's only like an hour and a half. So but it's a you know, it's an easy watch. It's not like an episode of Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> As short as a couple episodes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't say anything too bad. I still have an hour left of the ep- last episode to watch. So. Yeah, no, I, start, I I finished the last episode today, and I won't say anything about the show, but like, I just looked at the time, and I was like, two and a half fucking hours? Really? <laughs> I, I I've got out. places to be. God damn it. This is, this is what, yeah, because I, I don't have places to be. I have nothing to do, but really, this is what I'm committing to. <laughs> I mean, people are going to watch all the episodes in one sitting anyway. So, what's the point if it's two one-hour episodes or one two-hour episodes? For them, you, still the pa- you still have the pause button. You can still take your bathroom break. Yeah. For Netflix, I think they pay pay people by the episode, so that's the advantage to them. And they track their metrics by the uh, time spent viewing, so it doesn't really matter if it's one episode or two. It might save them money. I don't know. Now that's the thirty million they spent on average an episode, I guess. Anyway, anyway. Everybody, everybody's got their stuff open. They're ready to go. I am. I didn't figure yep. out the, uh, through the app. I got to figure out the background thing. So I apologize. I've been trying to figure that out. But no, that's right. I can. I, I can I'll send it. To <laughs> figure it out for me. Yeah, just give me access to your computer. <laughs> Remote access. Nothing bad will happen. Yeah, that's the story I haven't told you guys yet about my mom. But I heard that story. Oh, did you say? Yeah, yeah you told me. You told me that story. Yeah, that was that was fun. Not great, Dan. Mm-mm. Not great. No, she's learned a lesson, I think. <sighs> That's good. Well, well it's yeah. bad, but that's a good lesson. <laughs> oh, I'll be probably there in 30 years myself. Get yeah. Next year yelling at me. I only want to access your Bitcoin wallet. That's all. I don't have it anymore. I don't have anything. Sadness. Well, I'm not too sad. The <laughs> way it dropped. I'm actually okay. It's going to rally. You just wait. It probably will. And I'll probably get back into it too late. <laughs> just like everything else. My timing sucks. So are, are we doing... Going straight into it, or what are we doing here? I think is everybody think ready? I know I might put uh, Bruiser to sleep, but um, yeah, you know, it's a pretty significant Minnesota, not just Minnesota sports, but the Minnesota story. At least that's my opinion. I think it's a, I think it's a one of the bigger things that have happened in a while. Probably since the last, probably Jimmy Butler trade. Yeah, which that panned out well. <laughs> you got to go down the list of Timberwolves trades that went well. Where would you start? How about any trade that's gone well? 
Oh, the 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 first one of the first trades they ever made. Brad Lowhouse for Randy Brewer. That was a great trade. <laughs> you got to really stretch back there. Yeah, it was like <laughs> probably ninety or early ninety. Well, both a net zero trade there. I don't think anybody really gained anything. Were they both big men that like to shoot the three? They were both very homely, uh, large white men. I don't think they shot the three that well, no. But uh, shot a little bit outside. Brewer, I don't. Randy, Randy Brewer was the last of the uh, no um, manscaping oh, era of of NBA players. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun to watch him when he was really sweaty. <laughs> Same with Peter. Yeah. Well, that's I'd love to, to bring it back. Yeah. That's my goal. Bringing the sweaty back. Mm-hmm. Nice. We all have to have uh, have goals. Instead of bringing the sexy back, you're bringing the sweaty back. Everybody loves it. Uh, so we're going to jump into it? You're going to introduce us, whoever? Jeremy? Because he's not uh, paying yeah. attention. I do think it's about his time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome to No Time for TV. This is a bunch of assholes. <laughs> no, <laughs> no one cares about. No time for what now? <laughs> no time for podcast, whatever it is. Well, we've only been, done 20 or so of these. I get it. Yeah. Uh, Peter Martin. Uh, Eric Kinsella, Jason Edgar, guest host tonight. Jeremy Bishop, welcome. Who now? Yeah, honored to be here again. Well, when sorry, we sorry, and sorry again about the clinking ice. <laughs> we'll uh, edit it out in post. Yeah, yeah. I'll explain. Yeah, that we thing. edit. We edit most of Jeremy's comments in post. So <laughs> sometimes we leave out full segments. <laughs> yeah. that, well, just so- lay, that lay in the archives for later. To be fair, five minutes before we started, Jeremy did text me and said, I want you to bring up, because he's generous, he wants me to be the one who brings up the Randy Brewer or Brad Lowhouse trade. He didn't want to take all the credit for that gem. That was his deep pull? Yeah, it was his deep pull, yep. <laughs> wow. It's tr- I'm impressed. I get some love from my friends. He's, he's, very gi- he's a very giving lover. <laughs> Ladies. Is that so still- we're, we're doing this because of an emergency pod. What what day did the trade go down? I'm trying to remember back. It was a uh, Friday afternoon, so that would have been the first, July first. July first, and now you've had at least the holiday to ponder some of this. And what what are we thinking? So what is what is this trade? Explain this trade to me because I I have no idea what it is. So, so do you know who the Timberwolves are. Let's start there. <laughs> I know who the Timberwolves are. Yes, he's okay. he's aware of the animal. <laughs> okay. The Minnesota sports basketball team, the Minnesota Timberwolves, <laughs> traded with the Utah Jazz out of Utah, the state, for their... Wait, Utah's a state? Yeah. Yep. One of, the, one of the 50. And they're known for their jazz. And they're... Nah. Yep. Totally. 50. Can't be that many. <laughs> well, not for very long. <laughs> the way this is going. <laughs> one or two seasons by the end of the year. We'll see. Um but yes, so there's a big trade. The Minnesota grabbed a guy that's probably top 20 in the league, 25, depending on who you're talking to. Probably and one of the best three or four centers in the NBA. Yep. Yeah. Defensive stud, multi, multi-time, multi I think three-time defensive player of the year. And uh, 30 years old, making, what, $45 million a year over the next two years? Yep. So, so how, how did this trade come about? What is... Uh, well, they traded four team. picks. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the new GM or new, uh, yeah, GM, right? Yep. Uh, four first round picks plus uh, five players. Five players. I won't name their names because that won't mean anything to you. None uh, of them. None of them were like um, amongst the Wolves, like top three or four guys. They were all kind of you know mid level players on the Wolves. Role players. Yep. And just for a little context, the average NBA team has about twelve to fourteen players. They play five at a time on the floor, <laughs> so you get some idea. Trading five guys of your twelve. And getting one guy in return, it's a pretty big deal. But you yeah. could make an argument that they were players like five, six, seven talent wise. Yeah, you probably so that's where... they, they were like your Peter Martins on your team. Yeah, like the guys you don't want to really go to on the bench, but sometimes you know <laughs> you don't really have other options. You know those defensive specialists? Yeah, known for their monkey yeah. D. <laughs> the wingman you bring with to like look better than everybody, you know, just to kind of look better compared to him. That's what these guys are. They're like brutal six. It's like he looks good, but he's not a real player. Okay, we're not. We're not talking about brutal six. <laughs> so it, it's a for Minnesota because you know Minnesota doesn't get any free agents. I think we've pretty much covered that, right? Any big free agents, nobody's coming here. You know, if you can live in L.A., Miami, why the hell would you live in Minnesota? Yeah. Um, at least if you have you know a hundred million dollars in the bank. So it's uh, a pretty big deal, basically. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a huge deal for them. The question is, did we give up too much for a guy that doesn't score a lot and is 30 years old, probably on the downswing of his career? And French. <laughs> And for, he's the guy yeah. too. <laughs> what is what is like the what is a good age for for a basketball? Like you're saying he's thirty. Is that is that eighteen? Like, Nineteen. Usually, yeah, usually like eighteen to thirty-two, and after thirty-two, thirty-three, that's when the slide really starts. That's when I, I think most players peak at twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Um, I mean, unless you're you know a super superstar, you might you know Jordan, Kobe, carry that into your thirties pretty easily. And so then we gave up five players for that. So then how many? And, how many? And five and four first round draft picks. So it's a lot. It's a big haul. Um, I don't know that there's been more given up in a trade, draft pick wise, in the NBA. No, than, than this. So it, it we kind of is it draft time too? Pick. Like draft time is right now for? Uh, they just had the draft, so we had a yeah, month ago. We traded uh, a guy that we got in the our, with our first round pick in the draft. So who Jason loved, like it was a defensive yeah. center. Okay. So now's the part. Now's the part where I explain to Pete why it was actually a really good trade. No, like just be- just before we get there, I want to know when Pete peaked in his basketball career. When did I peak? Um, you were talking about peaking earlier. Yeah, so it was probably eighth grade. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't Pennock Park, uh, uh, the 1994 season. Well, that wasn't my peak, but you you saw me. That was you know a little bit on the downswing. I mean, if you saw me at my peak, I never would have even stepped foot in that court. It wasn't worth my time. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. What are we going to play now? <laughs> I'm putting my shoes on. I was probably there for an hour. <laughs> I, can say, I can say, I remember Steve Edgar peaked uh, freshman year of college. It was right before his knee went out on that court in the uh, in the back area of uh, whatever your dorm was, Pete. Uh-huh. The that super was, block? That was, that, was Steve Edgar's, that was Steve Edgar's peak. I remember he had, he had a glorious moment and then his knee went out. Yeah, that, that, his body always did betray him. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Some things never change. Wow. All right, so let's go. Let's let's hear. It. Talk talk me out of thinking that we gave up too much. I'm not okay. disappointed we got Rudy. I think we outbid ourselves on the market because I don't know who else would have given up anything close to that for him. Well, you're right. I mean, I don't think any other team would have traded that much, but I also think Utah number one needed to be cajoled into trading him to a division rival. And number two, really needed extra to take Jaden McDaniels out of the trade. I think they they were high on him. So just excluding him probably added at least one or two first round picks to the to the hall. Yeah. And that if there's one thing, I, you know, I totally agree. We kept our top four. Um, if you want to consider D'Angelo ahead of, you know, V8 and Beasley, that's a different question, Beverly. But yeah, I don't know. I think if the goal is to, you know, if they're putting the chips in the middle, it's a really hard sell to drop your three guys that would have been your top three bench guys and then four first round picks. But yes, I'm totally accepting of the fact that we didn't give up any guy that was a long term fit. I think almost every one of these guys, except for Kessler as a rookie, could be a free agent after next year. Right. That's pretty crazy. It did sound like, oh, go ahead. I was going to say Beverly had a two-year deal, that a two-year extension he just signed, but I think you're right. It might have been an option for the second year. So they, but they'll probably trade. Utah will probably trade him. Was it they won't. I know he signed for added the 13 million. Was that for next? I was thinking that was for next season. Was that for the two years? It, it was a two-year deal he signed like late last season, a two-year extension. Okay, I was thinking it was one year. Okay, but. it did. It did sound like Jade McDaniel's whenever the Wolves were talking to anybody, he was the first name anybody brought up. So it is probably best that we kept him but yeah and i think what i read too is like for durant nets were pushing for cat or ant which would have like kind yeah. of been the purpose of making the trade yeah. and i just want to say i mean a slightly off subject how hilarious would it be if utah offered the package they just got from minnesota offered that to brooklyn for durant and and and, and brooklyn accepted that right? would be that would be hilarious dear lord <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, and sad at the same time. So. No, he's gonna, don't worry, he'll push himself to to Phoenix. You know, he wants that 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 uh, you know that six mile walk uphill by taking out you know going to the team that had the best regular season record again. And see the con- the conspiracy minded sports fan would say because Phoenix's owner is halfway out the door and is under investigation for sexual harassment. There's no way the NBA is going to let them pick up Durant and win the title this year. So we'll see about that. It's Sarver, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have we thought about pooling our funds together to see if we can maybe get in on that Phoenix Suns action? 
<laughs> you know, I think I think I probably have enough to buy the Coyotes myself. <laughs> if, if, if if you want a hockey team instead, yeah, Jimmy, the Coyotes are a professional hockey team in the National Hockey League. <laughs> barely, just barely, just barely. Yeah, they're like the Jeremys of the NHL. <laughs> yeah, but they're not well received. <laughs> they're not well received. <laughs> I do think the uh, Coyote season is probably weather-wise more tolerable than the NBA season in Phoenix. Uh, it's got to be a billion degrees during the basketball season. Yeah, but now they both stretch so much; it probably they overlap so much. It probably doesn't even matter. There's I as a guy who's been to, to Phoenix, Arizona many times. Uh, there's no good season there. It, it <laughs> always sucks. Always. It's not bad if you don't care about hydration. <laughs> In the in, in no the outside outside always sucks. It's not bad in the winter when it's like oh, ninety. It's not too bad. Anyway, we're getting off topic, but all right. So that's all yeah, like I feel like we all bit ourselves. I feel like the Jazz. There's you know the rumors where there's such a big rift with Rudy and Mitchell that they knew they were getting rid of one of them, if not both, realistically, because Utah's like you know the Minneapolis of the Southwest. Nobody wants to play there. Um, so they were gonna they had to get rid of them. And again, I don't know who else would have given up that for them. You know, teams that might be trying to get over the hump don't need them, wouldn't use them. Yeah. I don't know. It was interesting. It was a yeah. I, I think Toronto was mentioned as a suitor, and obviously they're not tr- going to trade. What's his name? Scotty Scotty Barnes is that his yeah. their young guy? So maybe they offered better players, but without the picks, and that's why Minnesota had to throw in the picks. Again, who knows? And and. <clears throat> It could just be Utah said, screw you, give us more picks. And the guy in Minnesota said, well, we're going to dra- draft the wrong player anyway. So, so sure, take all the picks you want. It doesn't really matter. I love how that's like the Minnesota, and I don't totally disagree. The Minnesota sports fan defense. Oh, we never would have drafted somebody good anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, somebody, I just read on Twitter today, somebody's like, literally six of our last 30 draft picks have been like playable players Completely. and two of those the two of those were first overall pick yeah exactly. so unless we get the top overall pick we're not going to get the right guy anyway uh, I, and i just wonder like how he fits in with the team i mean they're what top ranked offense in the league last year i think so he'll be a guy. much better offensive player here just because you hear rumors that mitchell wouldn't pass him the ball and mm-hmm. all, all all of his points had to come off of rebounds so i think his scoring will go up I think um, having Russell and Ant driving the lane, it'll be like the old the old stuff on Marbury to Dean Garrett thing back in the day, where Garrett made a million multi million dollar contract just by Marbury driving the lane and handing him the ball to lay it in. Yeah. You know, you'll have Russell and Ant doing that with with Gobert all the time. So he's going to be a much bigger part of the offense than he was in in Utah, I think. Uh, maybe he can keep a cat out of foul trouble by keeping him out of the paint all the time. And yeah. Let Cat just absorb offensive balls. And well, how, how often is Cat in the paint, though? He's always hanging out by the three-point line and stuff, too. Like, there's plenty of space down there for Gobert. Yeah. And and Cat's, I mean, he's the best three-point shooting seven-footer probably in NBA history. So he, he's basically a perimeter player anyway. He doesn't, he, he, he and Gobert will not be occupying the same space on offense regardless. Yeah. yeah. I like the chaos of it all. Like, I'm all for them trying something different but yeah i mean at this point like you're not gonna they weren't gonna go out with this year's lineup and take down the suns or take down golden state right so yeah and most of the teams in the west are getting better you know especially if phoenix does end up with durant the wolves might not have made the playoffs next year if they didn't do something big all the teams behind them assuming the lakers do something all the teams behind them are going to get better denver was going to get a lot better Uh, dallas maybe not so much but it, they might not have been in the top 10 if they just stood still. Yeah, Dallas is probably the only team that got worse, right, with Brunson going. So Yeah, yeah. but I think they'll find some some guard to take his place. I just, where the hell's their money? Like, where's all their money on that roster? <laughs> is, it, um, is it Tim Hardaway Jr.? Isn't he making like 20 million something? He's making a good chunk, yeah. That's ridiculous. But then you see a bunch of bench guys coming in and getting like <clears throat> two year $20 million deals. It just blows my mind. It does seem like Rudy, though, too, isn't a guy that you have to worry about meshing with the rest of the players. Like, he's going to play a role where he's no, he, he knows what he's got to do for that team. He's not coming in and having he's to score and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I, I need 20 shots a game. Yeah. I'm going to be down there rebounding and getting dump offs and okay. let's hope. So, yeah. I mean, I think the perimeter defense, like, you know, you read about how he got played out of their series against, uh, 
the Warriors. Yeah. Right. That was but, bad. Yeah. But you know, again, how much is that him when they just shoot the outside ball and what's he gonna do? Yeah. You still have to rely on your your teammates when you're seven feet tall to to guard the perimeter. So no, I'm I'm interested to see how to go. I just wish like even just keeping Beasley or Beverly would have been helpful. But I think realistically, a lot of that was just a salary thing too, right? You know, to try to match his uh, forty plus million dollar salary. And and you know, this is the part where I explain why the guys we gave up, I think, were overvalued anyway. We're not going to miss them. Like Beasley, he was great a couple of years ago when he was getting starter minutes and getting a lot of touches. Last year, coming off the bench, he just wasn't that good. He didn't seem interested. He's got off court problems. He's kind of a headache. And he's probably overpaid for what his role was. So I have, I'm not going to miss him at all. Jalen Noel will fill his spot, no problem. Patrick Beverly, I, he's just an asshole. <laughs> the guy, he, 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 he's, he's the guy who he shows up to the new team. He identifies the one or two stars. He ingrati- ingratiates himself to them. He kisses their asses, makes himself seem more valuable than he really is. Goes on his media tour. The guy's hated for a reason. And he he didn't you didn't hear see anything from him till the playoffs started anyway. So I'm not going to miss him. They were probably going to trade him by the deadline anyway. Um, Vanderbilt again, too small. He's a high energy guy. It was great if you're playing him 15 minutes a game, but if you're playing him 30 minutes a game, he gets tired. And and we saw that all last year. And then he was going to have need a big raise at the end of this season anyways. They weren't going to want to pay him that. So those guys, I, I'm not going to miss them. I think we're better off. I mean, we could use one more veteran point guard for the end of the bench, but otherwise I think, I think we're, we're deep enough. I will be, I will miss Kessler. I do like the big dopey <laughs> white guys. I'm on record with that. I miss a guy that didn't ever play one minute for the Timberwolves. <laughs> but, but I, but I will also say I am a little bit concerned. Big dopey white guy from a big family down in the deep South transferred out of North Carolina to be closer to his family in Alabama. I think there might be some red flags there. <laughs> I, th- I think, I think if, I think he might have a few cousins with three percenter tattoos is that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> we'll see if a few years from now, if a story like that gets leaked out. Yeah. And like I said, with the draft picks, I mean, though, that's a crapshoot anyways. Maybe Utah hits on one or two of them and everyone will call the wolves an idiot idiots for doing it, but who cares? It's, you know, years down the road. Yeah. I mean, the, the hope is right. Those, at least those first three picks all should be in the twenties if they're doing things right late teens 20s so you know i did just kind of a side note to that i did look into this because I, I i didn't my memory wasn't quite sure but i checked it out when the wolves traded garnett to boston one of the picks they got back was the sixth pick in the 2009 draft so obviously they took johnny flynn with that pick had they taken steph curry we would think oh my god what a great trade for the timberwolves but because they took johnny flynn we think well it was a terrible trade the wolves didn't get anything for garnett yeah. so it's just little shit like that you, you just don't know yep little shit like drafting the best player in the <laughs> last two decades a, a surefire <laughs> hall of famer versus johnny <laughs> flynn the, the the guy who was a backup in the australian league yeah little things yeah yeah little thing <laughs> okay i got it but we all know steph wouldn't have been steph here he never would have resigned he he would have left first chance he got and you're kind of uh, address this though, Pete. Uh, who, what kind of player do you want them to take with the mid level if they can get what what type of player? Who do you think? What's the hole left in the the roster? Well, I think <clears throat> I don't know. I think the point guard we might be all right with uh, um, McLaughlin. Yeah, it's the backup. He's played, backup. right? I mean, if, yeah, he played a lot. It's a game and well, probably fifteen, I guess. And that uh, I I think they're mid level though. Didn't they give that to Kyle Anderson? So I'm not sure if I think they might only have. Yeah. Um, minimum veteran minimum contracts left to give i'm not sure yeah. about that i was re- somebody in slack was talking about how we still have the mid-level today so i'll maybe we don't but if we only have veteran minimums then your guess is as good as mine at that point i would love another did. shooting guard of some sort but like we we can never identify those so they did sign a kind of a replacement level shooting guard from Denver. Um, what's his name? Forbes. Yeah. Forbes. I've never heard of him before, but I get. I mean, he's you know he's an eleventh guy on the bench type. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's your prediction of? Do we make it out of the first round of the playoffs this year? I think depending yeah. on Denver, I think the Wolves will probably be like fourth or fifth. Well, I mean, they'll be competing with Denver for the division lead. Um, so I think they'll probably be in the three to five range going into the playoffs. If they get a good matchup, yeah, I think they'll win one round. If if they get lucky, if they stay healthy and other teams don't, yeah, they could go to the Western Finals. I, mean, I think, yeah, they're in trouble if they play a team that just outside shoots like the like the Warriors. Although last couple of years, you know, a healthy Wolves team always 
almost always seem to play the 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 warriors pretty tight right yeah and, and and this is the part where i where i interject how much bullshit that whole let's just copy the warriors thing is because yeah it's great to say warriors win shooting threes so we'll all just try to shoot threes yeah. we ignore the fact the warriors have the two best three-point shooters of all time on their roster <laughs> not every other team's going to be able to do that yeah and clay was you know pre-injury anyway he's an amazing qa player right like he was astounding so yeah no it's not fair and then they got pool of course thanks you guys they can thank us for jordan pool too by the way since they got him in their way out of the wiggins pick oh yeah gross <laughs> <sighs> yeah sorry <laughs> thanks for bringing that up everybody drink um but yeah i don't know i, I don't know I, I gotta look at what the what the updated roster really looks like but i'm always in for three and d guys coming out and off the bench and hoping they can uh do some damage. I don't know much about Anderson. I mean, you know, he looks like he, he might be a pretty solid bench guy, especially if they're committing, what, $9 million a year to him? Mm-hmm. I think it is. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't watch enough other teams to know who's good off the bench. I just know from what I observed and watching the, the Timberwolves games I did, which was quite a few for a casual, semi-casual fan, or maybe more than that, I guess. But, you know, parts of 40 games or whatever I watched. <laughs> Well, unless unless they come up with a Bally Sports comes up with a deal, I'm probably not going to be able to watch any games next year. I'm kind of pissed off about that. Oh no, where are they going? They well, I had been using uh, Steve's mother in law's cable subscription to get access to Bally Sports, and she just cut the cord. So I got to find either a new cable subscriber who'll give me their login, or um, Bally's has got to start selling a month selling their app access out of, for a monthly fee for something reasonable. They, they you can't even you can't even just uh, buy a subscription to their app. You can't just get cable and... I don't want cable. <laughs> I, I don't want to go back to cable just for that. So, <laughs> yeah, I got service And pay $50 a month for a cheap streaming service plus Bally. Well, that's what I've got. I've got the, the Hulu lo- with live TV now, but Bally's isn't part of that. So either they have to come up with some arrangement or they just got to <clears> offer a, a subscription to the app. Try something like Sling. I know, I'm pretty sure it's Bally's and Sling, but... Yeah, too late now. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm... Uh, I'm hopeful that if they stay healthy, they'll be a, a top four seed. As for making, you know, making it to the second round, that's like like, like Jason said, that's all based off who they play. Realistically, did Jason convince you it was a good trade? <laughs> Are you swayed? I mean, I could keep going. <laughs> I still think they gave up to that. They bet against, you know, they kind of bid against themselves. That's my concern. I think they yeah. over, you know. I think they, again, they really had to do the players they did for salary reasons. Yeah, so it's easier to. To say, okay, I get that part. Um, the hard thing is, you know, doing that and four picks. If it had been three, I think I would feel a little bit better. But realistically, in five years, I'm going to be like, damn it, I really wish we would have had that for eight years because the one's in 2029. 20, yeah. It was really nice seven years, you know, seven years ago. Had we not treated that first round pick? Probably not. Somebody online said that's going to be, that's a sixth grader right now that we'll be drafting them. Yeah, right. And, you know, in the, if any, GM out there is going to be, they're not playing for 15 years down the road, 10 years. They're playing for the next three to four, right? That's where their job is. So, and look at it like, look at, look at it like they traded 50 cents for a dollar plus the promise that I'll give you the next four coins I find on the street. Yeah. Maybe there'll be pennies, maybe there'll be quarters. Who knows? Maybe we'll come out ahead. Maybe we won't. Nope. That's fair. It was funny though. Like most of, or I shouldn't say most, but a lot of the, it's kind of like a Neil Diamond. You either loved or hated the trade for most people, right? Like, did Neil Diamond love it or hate it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he would. Have, I don't think he really cares. He seems more of a jazz fan. <laughs> the, the music of the team. I'm really getting this metaphor <laughs> confused. I would more because of the jazz singer, but yeah, um, he's a jazz man. Yeah. Gotcha. No, I think it's. I, I think it'll be. I don't think it hurts us. I'm not totally gut wrenched by it. I just think we gave up more than we had to. That being said, our team is not worse. I, I think I think they probably I assume they were talking with Indiana about Miles Turner, who they probably could have gotten for a lot less, but Indiana didn't want to take any contracts back. And yeah. the Wolves didn't have anything expiring or optional that they could pass on. So you know, it like I say, they got one of the top four centers in the league. They got they're gonna be on national TV a lot more next year, that's for sure. Okay. It's just unfortunate that center is literally like the, the least important position, arguably, in the NBA. Well, but that's that could be reversed too. I mean, that's just a trend because everyone in the NBA copies a success, successful team. And like I said earlier, you're not going to copy. You're not going to go out and find the two best three-point shooters to put in your backcourt. Only one team can do that. 
And maybe maybe I'd feel better too if Rudy was like 27. Yeah. Right. Instead but of those like French 30. guys, they age really well. They live a lot longer. <laughs> they stay a lot more active. Wee oui, wee. Oui. He could he could probably challenge Wilt's number if that's his if that's you know something he wants to do. <laughs> on or off the court? Off the court. Okay. He's not scoring a hundred on the court. <laughs> <laughs> He might score 100 off the court. <laughs> Slow month, maybe. <laughs> uh, there's no time for last requests. Ain't nobody got time for that. Look, Betty, I've got no time for games today. Now, now there's no time for a bench test. Heat them up. We're bringing sexy back. We're, We're bringing, bringing sexy, sexy back. back. Bringing sexy back. Bringing sexy back. I'm bringing sexy yeah. back. I think it's special to what's behind your, your back. So turn we around and I'll pick slack. up the slack. Sexy sexy back. Back. Take it to the bridge, dirty baby. You see the shadows, baby, I'm your slave. I'll let you with me if I misbehave. It's just that no one makes me feel this way. Take it to the chorus. Go ahead, be gone with it. Come to the back. Go ahead, be gone with it. VIP. Go ahead, be gone with it. Drinks on me. Go ahead, be gone with it. Twerking with it. Go ahead, be gone with it. Look at those hands. Go ahead, be gone with it. Make me smile. Go ahead, be gone with it. Come here, child. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. Go ahead, be gone with it. Get your sexy on. 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 Bring your sexy back. The mother lovers don't know how to act. You let me make it for the things you like. I got the things you like. You burn it up, I gotta get it back. Gotta get it back. Take him to the bridge. Take him to the bridge. Take him to the chorus. Cause we're bringing sexy back.